We are leveling up our Neko boys as we look at some more advanced techniques for painting up Zarakan Necrons. Welcome to Zorbazor Gaming, my name's Locker Linton Keen, and today we're diving back into the Zarakan dynasty of the Necrons. In our first installment, we covered the fundamentals of these grim dark brass cons, but today we'll be looking at some more advanced techniques to really elevate your Zarakan paint scheme. Going under the brush today, we have Big Daddy Neko, the Necron Overlord, the adorable Murder Buckets, and the big spooky boy, the Canoptic Reanimator. Now the techniques we're covering today, you could apply army-wide or even use them just to accent those showpiece models, like your heroes and your big sexy vehicles. Either way, they're a really useful tool to add to your painter's toolkit to make your models really pop. So as always, we begin with assembly. As all these models are from the Indominus box, we're diving back into those sprues. The Necron Overlord is on his own command pairing alongside the Primaris Captain, and the Crypto Thrall and the Canoptic Reanimator are on that big frame that we accessed the Scorpec Lord from before. All of these models are monoposed, so there's no big creative decisions to be making here, but we will keep those large panels on the top of the Canoptic Reanimator in a sub-assembly, just so that we can get much easier access to all of the details around the top of that model and then we'll attach those plates on as we move through the painting stages. Make sure you do get rid of as many mold lines as you can by scraping them across with the back of your hobby knife because we are going to be relying heavily on dry brushing for the fundamental phases of this paint job and the dry brushing just really shows up those mold lines. And then once you've got those all assembled, we're going to give them a nice even prime in Chaos Black. Once again, we need to make sure we get really good coverage with this prime because this is our foundation layer that we'll be dry brushing over. Now these early phases of the paint job are going to be very similar to the first video and I went in deep detail in that video, I'll link that above, so make sure you check that out if you haven't already. But we'll quickly whiz through these phases again nice and fast because there's a couple of little changes here and there because of the different components of these models. We begin the scheme by once again establishing the foundation of our brass metallic armor by applying a series of layered dry brushes. We'll begin with the new base color from Citadel, Rune Lord Brass, that was released alongside these new Necron models, and we're going to give an all over dry brush all over the model. We're leaving lots of black in the recesses to make our shadows, but just getting some good coverage of that brassy foundation. Then we're going to come in and repeat the process with Canoptic Alloy to create some accented highlights, dry brushing a little less heavily, just trying to get all of the raised edges and create a bit of a graduated tone of our brassy foundation. These layers are applied with really cheap synthetic makeup brushes. You don't need to spend a lot of money on these brushes. I just got mine nice and cheap from a local department store. Up next is all of the silver components. We're going again for that two-tone element. We're having all of the underneath skeletal structure as silver and those overlaying armor plates as that brass. So we're gonna get lead belcher here and apply an even base coat over all of the silver components. We have all of the arm and leg armatures, the joints, all of that mechanical actuation underbody underneath the armor plating. And on the Crypto Thrall, we're also gonna apply this silver base coat to those extended blades that come out of their arm. Arms. We'll also apply a silver base coat to all of the main joints and armatured under elements of the Canoptic Reanimator, but we're going to apply a bit of a heavy dry brush over a lot of these components to preserve the black darkness of this model. We're going to apply that dry brush on all of the big spiky legs because we want those to be a really kind of blackened steel look, and we'll build this up in successive layers later on. But also, that underbody, instead of applying this as an even base coat, it's a really dark, grimy element of the model. It's hidden under all those plates so we're going to dry brush this instead of base coating to really kind of darken this and get a nice black and shadowy look in this part of the model. You can see with all that silver down, we've got the foundations of our two-tone varying metallics. And on the reanimator there, you can see how the different application of silver creates those different vibrancies. We've got the nice bright silver joints, which we will wash back, but then the undercarriage up underneath the armor plates is already looking nice and dark and shadowy. The final metallic base coat to go down is a new paint for this scheme, and that's Retributor Armor, a nice bright gold. Because of course, our overlord, our big daddy Neko, has got some extra little bling. So we'll apply a nice even coat of gold over all of that bling that flows down off his neck. 
So our metallic base coats are down, very similar to the way we applied them in the first video, and now we're going to jump into our shades. This process is once again pretty much the same as that initial video, but there are a few little tweaks. We're going to grab our Cryptek Armor Shade first and apply that to all of our brassy components. Once again, this is the armor plating that sits over that underneath structure, and we want to get a nice even coating of this shade, and once this goes down, it makes the brass absolutely sing. The Overlord and the Crypto Thrall are relatively the same as the Necron Warriors or the Scorpec Lord, but the Canoptic Reanimator has quite a lot of cool brassy components. He's got that standard brass armor over his leg armatures, but he's also got that kind of really nice carapace that flows around the upper part of his body, which creates a foundation for the large armor plates that sit on the top, and they're going to get this wash as well. Once the Cryptek armor shade is down, our brass is looking mint, and now it's time to do our silver. We'll bring in Basilicanum Grey, apply that evenly to all of the silver components, including those large armor plates on the top of the shoulder pads of the Overlord, and that kind of over section of armor plating on the top of the Crypto Thrall, which once again was a dry brush with the brass undercoats, and has now been washed with the silver wash, so we've established that three-phase metallics. If you want to see that whole process in more detail, check out the first video. Our next main metallic wash to go down is Black Templar, the contrast paint from Citadel Color. We're going to apply this to a few key regions that are slightly different on these models. First up, we've got those big sharp blades on the Crypto Thrall. They're going to get a nice darkening coat of this Black Templar. And you'll notice that these almost go back to black, but they've just got a beginning of subtlety of tone around those edges. You can see a bit of that silver coming through. We'll also apply this contrast to the big blades at the bottom of the Canoptic Reanimator, and then just like we did in the previous scheme, we'll apply this Black Templar over any of the spine components of these Necrons. The big hulking spine of the Reanimator, and then the various smaller spines of the Overlord and the Crypto Thrall. So we're almost out of shade land, but of course we've got a new metallic, so we need a new shade. I'm just going to bring in some Agrax Earthshade and apply a nice rich coat. You can even do two coats if you like, all over the Retributor Armor gold detail and up around the collar of the Necron Overlord. And that'll give that gold a really nice luster, which we can then accent later on. So there we have our models so far, and we've effectively applied the same techniques as the first Zarakhan Necron video, with a few different changes to get these models to this point. But this is where we start to level up this paint job. We're going to look at some more advanced techniques that are really going to make these models sing. And these are the kind of techniques that you could apply army-wide if you really wanted a poppy, contrasty kind of look, or you could simply target a few select hero models to make them stand out from the rest of the pack. So in our last video, we basically left the metallics here. We just brought a bit of a lazy overbrush in to create a little bit more of an accent highlight, but we didn't push it any further. Today, we're going to bring in one of the most vital tools to any painter, and that is contrast. And we're going to do that by accenting these armor plates with some edge highlighting. So we're going to target the silver regions first, and we're going to bring in lead belcher and then storm host silver. When I use lead belcher, I always like to thin it just a little bit with Lamian medium because lead belcher really likes to gloop up and we want these to flow really nicely and we want a nice thin coat. So just a little bit of medium and I've mixed that in on my wet palette and now I'm going to go over all of the metallic regions of these model and accent those raised edges. And the way I like to do this in this first pass is basically accent a lot of the edges to really define the armor plates. I'm not worried about light sources or xenothol. I'm just coming in with a bit of that lead belcher on my brush and accenting every fine surface that I can use to separate separate regions of a model, particularly lines or hard edges that are bordering on the regions of that color. So silver against brass or silver against black, that's going to get a nice accented edge, which really separates those plates. The wonderful thing about these Necron models is that there are just so many armor plates that are screaming to be highlighted. They're beautifully sculpted and they've got lots of crisp edges. On the Crypto Thralls, I really focused on the main kind of curved armor plating around the top of their abdomen. Uh, on the Necron Overlord, he's obviously got those big shoulder pads which were brass base coated, but then we applied the silver wash, so I'm going to give them the silver edge highlights as well. And then he's got a few other accents around the model and the Necron Reanimator has just a couple of little silver points, mainly focusing on the ball joints around that under armature, and then a couple of little silver details in the upper regions of the body. I'm not going to worry about the claws for the time being. 
With that lead belcher down, you can already see just how much the silver is actually reading on the model. It used to get quite lost before, but now it's got some shape, it's got some pop, and it really captures the eye. But we're going to accent that further, and we're going to bring in the light element. Obviously, all of these models should exist in a space where there is a light source. So what I like to do is use that first layer to create definition, and then this lighter highlight, the Stormho Silver, this is where I really kind of give the illusion of that lighting element. So we're going to bring in an even finer highlight highlight of this Stormhost Silver on our brush and I just use this neat on the pot and thin it a little bit naturally with the brush across the palette and then we're going to highlight all of the areas that would get hit by that bright highlight from the light source. So across the tops of the models, across the tops of the armor plates, the Necron Overlord, across the top of his large shoulder plates and any of those silver elements maybe on his heels that are sticking out from the model with his dynamic pose and then the same thing with the Crypto Thrall, he's got those big armor plates across the top and then he hitting all of the little accents that are leading out catching some sunlight. With the silver work down, you can see how much more that layer is popping. It's almost dominating the brass layer visually. So it's time to pay some attention to the brass armor. Now we're going to apply the exact same process here, and we're actually just going to layer back up with our base coats, our Rune Lord brass, and then our Canoptic alloy. And this works absolutely perfectly. We put these down as our foundational dry brushes, and then we wash the model with the Cryptek armor shade. And that darkens up the brass so much that these original base coats are literally the perfect highlight tones. And that often doesn't work, but it's just the strength and the depth of that color in the armor shade that makes this perfect. So we'll put down the Rune Lord brass all over the armor plates, hitting all of those crisp edges. And there's a lot of brass work along these models. Brass is really the dominant color, uh, even more kind of over that silver understructure. So we really want to make sure we nail all of those brassy components. The Canoptic Reanimator has those really huge brassy armor plates across the top of the model, and then the brassy clad armor on his lower regions or lower limbs, and then the Overlord, his kind of main point, apart from the cladding on his arms and legs, is that torso. And it's sitting underneath the gold medallions and underneath the big silver shoulder pads, but it's kind of that central focal point, and it, and it frames his neck and his collar as well. So get some lovely brass crisp highlighting on those. And then on the Crypto Thrall, there's not a great deal of brass. It's just the cladding on the arms and legs and in and around that abdomen. With the Rune Lord Brass down, we'll switch it up to Canoptic Alloy and apply the exact same ideological process as our Mithril Silver or Stormhost Silver. We're going to come in and apply this slightly brighter brassy silver where all our highlights would be from a light source. So the big regions are these massive armor plates on the top of the reanimator. They're right up the top, so they're copying the full brunt of that light source. So every little glinty edge, uh, even those little nicks and armor damages, not just the outer edges of the plates, are getting an accent. And then once again, any of those limbs that are sticking out from underneath the models, either on the Crypto Thrall or the Necron Overlord, they're going to get a little highlight as well to make them really pop and make the regions that are stuck out have a bit of a glint. And then that's going to naturally leave the other regions in a darker shadow. And this is how we create the illusion of that light source and, and a really dynamic presence on the model that makes him feel like he's in a grim, dark, grimy, future 40k environment. The final highlights on the under chassis of the Canoptic Reanimator are just focusing on those lower limbs that are protruding out at the bottom on the angle because they're going to catch the light. And I do give just a couple of little accents to those armor plates, the brassy armor plates that wrap around the top, even though they would be slightly submerged underneath uh, that armor plating that sits above them. Uh, we're going to capture these with a little bit of that green glow later on. So we want some brighter points there to glaze and they're just such nice plates. We want to draw a bit of attention to them. Holy wow, look at that armor. How much more presence does that have on the model? The edge highlighting is really dynamic and it really elevates it. It was a lot more muted before, and to be honest, there's nothing wrong with that muted tone if that's the kind of grim, dour look you want for a big horde of models. But if you want something to really pop and stand out, this is a fantastic technique to make this model really draw the eye. You can really see just the difference that these techniques do create when we compare the Overlord to the Scorpec Lord there on the right. Obviously, the Scorpec Lord has also been varnished, so these models have a little more shine, but it just it's a really striking application of paint in comparison just to the muted dry brushing we did before. 
So with all of these techniques, if that's the look that you love and you're loving that shine, you could leave it there. But I want to push it one step further and bring in more character and grime and weathering into these brassy and silver armor plates. So we're going to grab some typhus corrosion and start to put the foundation for a rusty weathered grime layer. Now this typhus corrosion is quite possibly my favorite paint. We worked with it a little bit in the last video, but I'm, we're going to really accent it here. So I'm going to grab a, a beat up old brush I don't care about and just dab and stipple a whole bunch of typhus corrosion onto various metallic components of these models. And then I'm going to bring in a beat up old brush and kind of pull away at the edges of that area to help blend it in. Because when it dries, it's got a bit of grit naturally worked into it and it can look really contrasty. And we want it to be a kind of subtle wear. So it looks like uh, rust that's kind of uh, applying over these broad panels. So I, I come in, I apply it with dabs and stipples on one brush, and then I bring in the second brush and pull it away and blend it and kind of smooth out the transitions and, and almost thin it a little bit by pulling away some of the typhus corrosion. So all over the metal components in joins, in grooves, it looks really nice in recesses where moisture would pool and sit and begin to rust away all of your metals. You can see there on that broad armor plate, once it's dry, it really kind of creates a lovely grimy effect. It's got like nice enhanced shadows that have lots of texture and it just, yeah, it really, really makes the metals kind of go in a whole different direction. And I love that character that it gives them. But what we're gonna do now is really accent that and really create that rust look. We're gonna bring in some brass scorpion and I'm gonna go back to one of my soft makeup brushes and we're gonna apply a very lightly stippled dry brush. You wanna make sure you don't have too much paint here. What we want to be doing is basically just hitting the highlights of the texture that we've applied down. So leaving the brassy uh, or the, the grimy browns that the typhus has put down and then we're accenting all of those regions that we've put down the typhus to hit the highlights of the grit that's gone down on the model and make them a little bit more brassy. Bring in that rusty kind of ochre. So apply that dry brush all over the regions that you've put down some typhus and then what we're going to do is come in with one more dry brush returning to lead belcher. Now lead Belcher is a pure silver. It's that dark steel kind of silver. And we're going to apply that in the exact same way, just doing a much lighter pass to really hit the top of the highlight, the crispest of crisp uh, textured details, uh, just to give that, that rust a little bit of shine and help blend it in with the beautiful highlights we've worked in and also make it look like some of that, that metal is kind of shining underneath our light source. So with that weathering down, it's a super, super simple application, but you can see it's just added a little bit of something, something to the metallics. I, I, I love the character it gives them. It's not so uniform and it really likes to break it all up. Now up next, we're going to work on all of the dark steel areas that we have on these models. And these are new to this scheme. We've got the big, massive blades on the Canoptic Reanimator and the kind of blackened undercarriage up on the upper chassis and then the smaller blades on the Crypto Thrall. Now, if you remember earlier in the scheme, these are all the areas that were base coated in lead belcher and then had the black templar application and now what we're going to do is begin to layer those metallics to create a cool cool effect so first up i'm going to mix up a dark steel look uh, by mixing some abaddon black and some lead belcher if you've got a dark color that matches this in a nice metallic from scale 75 or even citadel feel free to use that as well this is just how i mix it up and then i'm going to grab my dry brush and apply a heavy overbrush on all of these regions we want to kind of put a bit of mid-tone into the flat regions really heavily uh, accent all of the raised regions uh, but we're not applying an even coat here we want to keep some of that cool element that we've got with the black templar underneath and that deep light uh, lead belcher at the very base so it, it, we're, we're just building layers here building layers which looks really nice on this darkened steel then what I'm gonna do is switch up to my fine detail brush I'm gonna grab that darkened steel look and I'm just gonna edge highlight all of the claws to create a further accent and really kind of make those edges Edges well defined. Uh, obviously all of the dry brushing will have hit them a little bit but just go in on any of the really sharpened thick edges uh, and kind of put in a little bit more definition and then I'm gonna bring in some pure lead belcher to act as our highlight and go through and edge highlight all of those regions again. So we've got the sharp crisp edges on the outside, the different panel crenellations. You just want to make sure you're kind of edge highlighting all of those components running up the flats of the blade uh, to make sure that all those details are really reading. And there you can see 
we've got a lot more definition, but then we're gonna go back into the grime. So we're gonna grab some typhus corrosion once again and apply this in the exact same way before. Stipple it onto the entire blade with one brush and then come back with a clean brush and pull away a lot of that material. We can use your finger as well. We wanna make sure none of that typhus builds up on those nice uh, edges that we've highlighted. It's just building up a layer of gritty grime over the central flat regions of those panels. And when those are grimed up, they're starting to look super spooky. And then we'll just do one final pass with Lead Belcher using our dry brush this time uh, to kind of give that grit a little bit of a silver, high, uh, silver highlight uh, with the dry brush. So that way we've got our bright silver sharp edges. We've got the depths, the black depths of the blade through the full section that's grimed up, that's textured up, but also has a little bit of a sparkle. So a lot of layers there just for some black and steel, but it creates a really nice effect that has quite a lot of cool depth. And it's actually super easy to do because they're all really quick techniques. Our silver's done, our brass is done, our black steel's done, it's time to do our gold. Uh, and now we're just gonna bring in some Stormhost silver and just do some kind of really clean and simple edge highlights across the top of all of those little gold panels just to kind of give the illusion of the light sparkling on those gold details. So edging the tops and maybe a little bit of the sides as those golden panels curve to catch the light and that'll give those gold elements a really nice pop. So with that final layer down, look how much presence the metallic layers have. They're so striking. I'm really happy with this effect. And yeah, I think they look absolutely amazing and they will get just a little bit more blended as well because of course, matte varnish will go down at the end of the model. So now what I'm gonna do is just quickly get these models to their finished state using the exact same steps from our first tutorial, picking out the power cables in green and then doing our object source lighting with Tesseract Glow and getting all of our Necron greeny elements. So if you need to follow those steps again just refer back to the first video so there we have our finished models and we'll throw down a matte varnish on those and that blends the final mix together of all of our layers and they just look really awesome I'm super happy with them and I think the advanced techniques are worth it particularly on hero models they're almost more rewarding for combining with the tesseract glow and those green object source lighting the glazers have more highlights to accent and it kind of reads even better with all of those edge highlightings able to be filtered uh, by the very various glazers. So I think it looks really great in combination together and it's a nice striking look with those sharpened up metallics and the beautiful glows of the greens. But now it's time to jump into basing and I know you guys have been absolutely dying to get your hands on some uh, Grimdark City Rubble. Uh, if you head over to the store at the moment and it says out of stock, don't be alarmed. I've got so much coming. It's just been held up by customs and in just a few more days it should all be back in stock. But today we'll be using a slightly different base ready mix from the Geek Gaming Scenic Range, which has sort of got a, more of a Necron theme. It's called Grimdark Tomb World, and it's got a really nice blend of black sands and green gems. So it's really kind of capturing, you know, the, the inner sanctum of the Tomb World and these really beautiful shattered crystal elements that make for some fantastic basing. And if you want to put your Necrons deep in the Tomb World as opposed to fighting amongst the urban rubble, then this is the base ready for you. So it's the exact same process. We apply our fast drying basing glue, get that all over the base, uh, get a nice even coverage, relatively thick, and then let that dry for sort of 10 minutes so that it starts to go glossy. And then we just grab our bases and dip them straight down in the mixture. Sometimes you might want to grab a few of the little green gems and just drop it down first to get some, you know, optimally positioned, uh, optimally positioned gems. Otherwise, you can just dump it straight in and see where the gems land up, which could be quite fun as well. And then I'm going to leave that for a couple of hours to fully dry and then bring in some Geek Gaming sealant spray and just soak the base with this sealant. It's just a mix of PVA and matte varnish and it will really lock down that base, which is perfect if you've got models that aren't just for display. They're gonna be heavily gamed with. That way your basic material is never going to come off and then just soak up any excess of that spray off the model itself. Although, you know, we varnish that and it will dry perfectly clear, so it's not a big deal anyway. If you're keen to use these basing products yourself, they're all available over at Zorbazorp.com, link down in the description. Then once that seal and spray is dry, our Necrons are finished and they are ready to take the fight to the Imperium and claim back their lost empire.
So there we have our Zarakan Necrons. I really like the kind of level ups that we did to this scheme. We brought in some edge highlighting and did some more kind of complex weathering and rusty stuff. And it just elevates the models a little bit and it, it creates a different look. And I think that's important because it makes these models stand out. So this is the kind of stuff that I would do on those showpiece models. Obviously we had the Overlord today and the kind of bigger vehicle model, I guess, of the... Uh, fuck's this thing called? The Canoptic Reanimator. Uh, so um, I, th I think those techniques are, are a really great kind of thing to add to your toolkit, uh, but I wouldn't do them on the whole army. You could if you wanted to, but I just, I'm really happy with the original scheme, but these do really kind of level up those hero models. When you look at the side by side, and I'll throw the picture up, you can see the distinct difference, right? Obviously the edge highlighting creates a lot more contrast. It creates an overall uh, kind of brighter aesthetic because we get so many more of those highlights, whereas it, it's kind of a lot more well, grim and dark, which is good on the original scheme, but a lot more muted uh, and uh, and a lot less kind of poppy. And I don't think that's a bad look. I actually think it's really cool, uh, but it's sometimes really nice to have uh, those kind of hardcore accents uh, on the uh, on some really special models. And I think the rusty stuff is awesome, right? I love Typhus Corrosion and bringing in a little bit more of that grime, a little bit more weathering uh, certainly looks cool. Now, all of these techniques we cover today, they're certainly not insanely hard. They're super achievable. I'm no Golden Demon level painter. I just want to get cool models on the table that I can be proud of and I don't want to spend hours and hours doing it because I've got shit to do. So, uh, yeah, I'm happy with these results. I hope you guys like the extra techniques we looked at today. Uh, we're going to be covering a whole lot more next Necron content. We've got Necron Terrain in the works at some point. Obviously, we're diving through lots more Indominus. We have some epic Blood Raven stuff coming up for the other half of my Indominus forces. And then, boy oh boy, are we going to see those forces smashing against each other in some awesome campaigns and battle reports in the future. So stick around, subscribe if you're new around here, and please check out all my other 40k content and buckle up because there is loads more coming. I will see you next time right here on Zorp Zorp. Cheers, guys. Would you get out of the shot? Today we level up our cats as we paint cats and all of the cats. Stage of weathering, uh, and then we've brought in the rest of the- Would you not knock over my Indominus box? Get out! Get out! You gonna be still? <laughs> okay. She wants the sprues inside.